Hello, Professor Tom Seeley. Uh, thank you very much for appearing here at the National Honey Show, the virtual National Honey Show with, with Beecraft. Uh, we have really enjoyed the articles that you've produced for Beecraft uh, over, over the years. And uh, one that was from earlier this year about searching for wild bees uh, down in uh, Ithaca. But you're now in Maine, but maybe we'll come back to that a little later. Uh, we've, we've all enjoyed your books on honeybee democracy and the wisdom of the hive. So we're just very intrigued to know what you've found out since and what the nest scout bees have told you. The behavioral sophistication of the nest site scouts is amazing to me. Astonishing, I think, is the word I use in the title of the article. And, um, and I think it actually... Um, is an important thing to, for us as beekeepers to, to appreciate because it understanding what they do, how many different things they do, how sophisticated they are, how they control the whole swarming operation from the time the swarm leaves the parental nest to when it clusters outside to choosing the home site and then guiding the swarm to its new home site. Um, all of that is concentrated in a few hundred bees within the swarm, the nest site scouts. So they do a lot of different things. And it's almost unbelievable that they, that they have the ability to do all of these things in the right way at the right time. Let me explain, for example. One of the first things this, uh, the nest site scouts do, and this is something I didn't know at the time I wrote Honeybee Democracy. I knew about the nest, when I wrote Honeybee Democracy, I knew that the nest site scouts went out, looked for homes, went through a collective decision-making process. And then once they had completed that, they could sense when they had reached an agreement. Um, they could warm up all of the other bees, signal the other bees to warm up their flight muscles stimulate them to launch into flight when everybody was warm and then steer them to the new home. But I, I didn't know that the nest site scouts are also the bees that are responsible for triggering the initial departure of the swarm from the parental nest or hive. And um, we learned that when we did a study in which we went to an island, it's described in the article, went to an island, set up observation hives from which the bees could swarm. And we put out one nest box. And fortunately, our three observation hive colonies swarmed on different days so we could watch the processes of each colony separately. And what we saw was that the bees that initiated the departure of the swarm from its hive, those bees turned out to be the same bees that did the nest site scouting um, for the, uh, when they got around to the point of choosing the home. And they used the same signals to trigger the departure from the hive as they used to trigger the departure of the swarm from its nesting site. And these are two signals. One is the a worker piping signal, the nest site inside a hive that's, that's primed, ready to swarm. Some of the bees, the nest, the future nest, the nest site scouts, who have actually already been out scouting even before the swarm leaves, um, uh, when they sense that the weather conditions are right, um, they run around, walk around, I should say, inside the nest, making this piping signal, grabbing other bees one at a time, pressing their thorax against the the non-scout bees, making this sound that goes, and that tells the other bees to warm up and. And then after about an hour or so, once they, once the nest site, once these scout bees, nest site scouts sense that everybody is warm, then they go run around through the, through the nest doing buzz runs, which tells them all to go outside to, or not all of them, but most of the bees to go outside in the swarm. And then they've, and then the swarm clusters and then they go through their whole house hunting process. So the fact that the, <laughs> This is a long answer to your question, but when you think about all of those things those little nest site scout bees have to do, they have to sense that the colony is ready to swarm, getting ready to swarm. Um, so they start their house hunting. Um, and, and then when they sense, it might be the same day, might be later the next day, 
then when they sense that the conditions are right to actually have the swarm makes its exodus, they, they stimulate and organize that exodus. They also choose this interim site where the swarm clusters. Then they go out and continue their search for home sites and complete the decision making and then guide the swarm on its flight to the new home site. And then they mark the new home site. I, that, uh, to me, it is, it's probably the, it's, it, understanding these nest site scouts has really recalibrated my understanding or expectations for the behavioral sophistication of worker bees. And, uh, and so I, uh, I think they give us a very, a very broad lesson, a very important lesson. So that, that's, why I, that's why I wrote this article for, for Beecraft, and it's because that was a, a message I really wanted to, to convey to beekeepers. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I've read the article, of course. I've, got, I've had the preview, and it is a fascinating article. I'm sure readers are really going to enjoy it. So thank you very much indeed for it. Well, Can you tell us a little bit about your move? You've, you've moved 500 miles or so from Ithaca, upstate New York, to Maine, right on the borders with Canada. Does this offer you new opportunities for honeybee research? It, it does. It, it does indeed. Um, it's a, it's a, Ithaca, New York is a place, is, it's, first of all, it's a very different, let's see, where do I start? <laughs> They are very different places. One is a merit here in Maine. It's a maritime community, a little a little town, 450 residents, um, tucked away, as you say, up by the border of Canada. Um, and Ithaca is a uh, is in the center of New York State. It's a rolling countryside. It's the sea is uh, 400 miles away, 400 miles away, and it's it's wonderful for a wonderful place for bees and beekeepers. This is pro this is not so good. For bees and beekeepers. It, for one thing, uh, half of what you see when you turn in, to, if you look, if you look um, east, you see water. <laughs> There's no forage out over this ocean. If you turn west, you see oh, uh, coniferous, northern coniferous forests. So it's only the old farmlands that are still kept open in places where the bees find forage. So one of the many things I'll be interested in looking at is whether by trend, is whether the bees have to forage in different ways up here than back in Ithaca. In Ithaca, they can go in any direction and find forage, uh, and a lot of it very good. And here, it's it's probably going to they can only go one direction inland, and what they'll find is probably much sparser. sparser. So I, I wonder if they'll be having to travel a lot farther, for example. Uh, and and. One of, one of the ways I'll do that is I'll set up my observation hive and, and read the dances carefully and, and get a clear picture of where they're going. Let the bees tell me. Excellent. We, we look forward to it because as a, as a former geographer, I've always been intrigued by the way you have used landscapes and topography, islands and lakes in your research. It has been, it's obviously key to the ability to do so much of that research and I find it absolutely fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, the island, the the island I've worked on, Appledore. It's an without that access to a, to that isolation and that absence of natural nest sites, a lot of the work I've done would have, would not have been possible. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed, Tom. We are very honoured to have you on on this Beecraft cameo, and we look forward to more articles, perhaps next year, and to hear what's happening in Maine. So. On behalf of the whole team here, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's, and I look forward to being able to, next year, let's hope, the National Honey Show. That's always a, always a great time. Bees, bees, half to your bees. Hide from your neighbors as much as you please. But all that has happened to us, you must tell, or else we will give you no honey to sell.